at Escalante, I booked myself a room at the Circle D Motel, and after that I settled down for a good night's sleep. The next morning started off bright, sunny, and clear, and I was soon on my way to Hole in the Rock Road. Hole in the Rock Road is an old washboard dirt road that is so bad that 30 miles an hour is the top speed. And even then you bounce around so much you feel like what Chuck Yeager must have felt like breaking the sound barrier. First stop off on the Hole in the Rock Road was an area called the Devil's Garden. The Devil's Garden is known for its bizarre rock formations. There really isn't any type of trail here, you just get out and walk among the rocks. peek a -boo. At the Devil's Garden, it's 8 o'clock in the morning. I could be here or I could be at work. Still wandering around Devil's Garden. After spending some time at Devil's Garden, I was back on that bumpy road to my next destination. That happened to be the Dry Fork Trailhead. On the Rock Road. That's the road to the Dry Fork Trailhead. Here's another view of that rutted, bumpy road. This trail is just as rutted and bumpy as the road. And looking back the other way. That car or marker tells me that I'm on the right trail. Here's a couple more hikers a little farther down the trail headed to Dry Fork Canyon. I'm in Dry Fork Canyon now, and this is the entrance to the Coyote Gulch Slot Canyon. Here I am walking down Coyote Gulch Slot Canyon. Not very narrow as far as slot canyons go. That will come later. Notice I follow the trail and avoid the right hand side. That's because it had rained a few days before and that area was a thick, shoe swallowing mud. Here's where some people, including me, used that mud to make some 21st century pictographs. October 14th, 2013, Columbus Day, and I'm in Coyote Gulch Slot Canyon. One nice thing about hiking in a slot canyon, it's really hard to get lost. I mean, you've really got to try to get lost. Only two ways. So guess what? I'm lost. And what's it like being lost in a slot canyon? Be afraid. Be very afraid. Actually, it's not that scary. I simply did what any other intelligent canyon hiker would do. I flipped a coin. Heads I go forwards, tails I go backwards. And you know I'm a guy that likes a good tail. After that it was headed on my way back out and back to Dry Fork Canyon where I hiked farther down to the next slot canyon. 
Next stop was the famous Snoopy Slot Canyon. Anyone who goes down Dry Fork Canyon has got to hike Snoopy Canyon, mainly because this is a real slot canyon. This entrance is the widest part of it. Sometimes you had to bend over to get through. A lot of times you had to turn sideways. You can't be claustrophobic going through this slot canyon. I'm in Spooky Canyon. It was times like this where I was glad I'd paid a visit to my doctor before going on the trip. Hmm, let's see. Let's take a look at the test results of a Mr. Mark Erickson. What? This cannot be right. I'd better look at it again. Okay, that's more like it. After that, I turned around, made my way back slowly to the entrance of Snoopy Slot Canyon and back out of Dry Fork Canyon and drove back down Hole in the Rock Road to the town of Escalante. That night, the Circle K Motel was booked up, so I stayed at the Padre Motel in Escalante. It was a quiet night, and I hate to sound like a broken record, but I slept like a dog. <laughs> The next morning I woke up to partly cloudy skies and cooler temperatures. I got on the road and made my way north to the town of Boulder. Finally I made it to my destination, Scenic Bird Trail Road. Bird Trail Road is relatively unknown to the average tourist and I don't know why, because it's chock full of beautiful scenery. That's where I'll be down in a few minutes. Every turn of the road brought out another spot where you wanted to get out of the car and walk among the Navajo sandstone cliffs and formations. It is believed that the Navajo sandstone here is as old as the Triassic period. After a while, the paved road turned into a dirt road. There you can see the rain in the distance. There's the road going down. The condition of the dirt section of the road can change from day to day. Once again, passenger cars can drive this section without any problems, but during a rain, it may be impassable. While I was out hiking, who should I run into but famed explorer Clutch Cargo? You may remember Clutch from his TV show. Clutch had recently spent the last six months mapping the Zambezi River in Africa, which may explain why his people skills had eroded so much. Or maybe it was just his growing fondness for the bottle. You know, Clutch, when I look at these rocks here, sometimes I see different images. Like that rock over there. I think it looks like a giant dinosaur's head. Are you off your fucking meds or something? You know what I was thinking of, Clutch? Right now, I wish I had a big, juicy hamburger and a tall milkshake to go with it. Well, wish in one hand, shit down, and see which one fills up first. After a while, it was time for us to split our ways. Clutch wanted to continue down Bird Trail Road, and I needed to get back to my motel and get ready for the next day. Well, Clutch, I guess this is it. I'd like to say what I'm John that has been hiking with you these past few hours. Maybe we can do it again. I'll be seeing you. It's been a good time. I've seen some pretty shitty situations in my life, but nothing has ever sucked more ass than this. 
On the way back to my motel, I decided to take the long way back and drive down Hell's Backbone Road. Hell's Backbone Road was another in a long list of bumpy dirt roads I'd driven on in this vacation. Here I am at Hell's Backbone Bridge. Here's looking down the bridge and over it's a 1500 foot drop to the bottom. You might want to make sure you keep your eyes on the road. I ran into some snow flurries on the road. It got me wondering what I was doing down this back road and hoping that I hadn't made a wrong turn. Finally back on Highway 12. The snow flurries had stopped but the weather in the distance still looked ominous. Looking down below at a car where I'd just been. Strange rock formations in the distance. By the time I'd finished my dinner, it had gotten pretty cold out. About as cold as a polar bear's ass in the winter time. But that was okay, because I was in the Panda Motel, and I was nestled, all snug in my bed, while visions of sugar plums danced in my head. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. I got my stories mixed up. I think I was having a senior moment. Anyways, I've come to the end of part two of my trip to Utah. You can look for the final installment at your nearest drug rehab center. <laughs>